if I'm really around the corner, you know what I mean? I'm not going to live far from here. All these properties have been sold at auction, and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid for them when they went under the hammer. Well done, so it's yours. This is Newham, a borough of East London, and our auction lot is not far from Newham Hospital, which could mean lots of potential hospital staff as tenants. Well, if you're hoping for somewhere that's close to transport links, well, tube ones anyway, you might be a bit disappointed. It is a 20-minute walk to the tube. However, let's just talk about prices, because the average price of properties around here is £246,000. This place behind me had a guide price of 180,000. Three bed, mid terrace. That's interesting, isn't it? A property guided below 200,000 pounds in London has got to be worth investigating. Let's hope it doesn't disappoint. So, whenever there's that kind of a level of discrepancy between average property prices and what the guide price was, you've got to be thinking, ah, what am I going to be faced with? But actually, doesn't smell damp. Obviously in need of a bit of tender loving care, but good size. I like the front room there. Nice feature fireplace, bay window, double glazing. Um, I'm looking around straight away though. It doesn't look like the central heating, so you're going to have to factor that into your budget. Um, but fairly standard layout, stairs up to your bedrooms there, into your sort of rear sitting room. Poke behind here. <laughs> Slightly disappointing. I was hoping for something a little more elaborate than that. But um, at least it is an open fire, you know, and I love open fires, so um, make a bit of a feature of that. Door out to your garden there, and then from, yeah, pretty much middle of the road, it's okay kind of scenario to, oh, no, when you come here. This, sadly, is the kitchen. Built into an extension on the rear of the property, and as you can see, it is pretty inadequate, to say the least. And sadly, it gets worse, because that is your bathroom. I say bathroom, it hasn't actually got a bath in it, but there's a separate loo and this shower area here. Obviously, you've also got signs of damp as well. So, from what was a reasonably hopeful start, it all went a bit wrong. It's a shame because the rooms and the main body of the property are great, with bags of character. And then the kitchen and the bathroom are crammed in the back, almost as an afterthought. And with modern living demanding, or maybe requiring, a big modern kitchen, this just doesn't hack it. Look at this, a very substantial garden indeed, in London no less. This is a massive bonus. You could easily fit a bigger and better extension in here to house a kitchen. Maybe even a two-storey one with a bathroom above. Or am I getting ahead of myself here? Maybe there's room upstairs for the bathroom, so all the space in the current extension could be given over to the kitchen. Let's see. So, upstairs, and what are we going to find? Well, little landing area here. I think you could make it feel a lot less claustrophobic by getting rid of that cupboard, for sure. Um, first of the bedrooms, that's not a bad size. It's nice, it's got another original fireplace. It gives real character, so we like that. But once again, the house does that, doesn't it? It gets you all excited, and then as you progress a little further, it goes horribly wrong. Because these are the second and third bedrooms. This is the second one, and as you can see, it's really small. What's that all about? It's all stood partition walls. Um, the clue as to what actually is going on can be found, actually, bizarrely, through the stood partition. Now, clearly, this isn't an original feature, <laughs> but it does give you a chance to do a masterclass in construction of stud partitions. <laughs> the main thing is, you need to get rid of it. It's divided what was a fairly decent front bedroom into two really unacceptable smaller bedrooms. Now, you may get a bit more rent for the property, three bedrooms, but really, it doesn't work, does it? We belong together. These rooms definitely need to be reunited, and I reckon a few hours with a sledgehammer should achieve that. 
and the house would be all the better for it. And for me, this property is a bit of a curate's egg. Good in parts, with nice period features and some good sized rooms. Plus that attractive £180,000 guide price. But the layout is really holding it back. But what does a local estate agent think of what's on offer here? Does she have any thoughts about the layout? As a personal preference, I would leave the big bathroom downstairs um, to have like a family bathroom and have uh, even an ensuite uh, shower room upstairs or a separate shower room. That's not a bad idea, even if the bathroom remains in the same place. Perhaps the attraction of an ensuite would entice buyers in. But that would mean it would have to be a two-bed house and not the pretend three as we have at the moment. What effect would that have on the value? Once renovated on its current layout, um, this property can resale in between 270 to 280,000 pounds. If this property would be um, renovated and uh, changed to a two-bedroom house, this property can be resale to a price in between 240,000 pounds and 260,000 pounds. Wow, so losing that third bedroom could mean lessening the value by 20 or even 30,000 pounds. That has to be the most expensive partition wall ever. However, the agent thought that as a two-bedroom house, it would sell faster than a three-bed. So what about the rental values? Uh, this property can be rented out for 1,300 pounds per calendar month. As a two-bedroom house, this property um, can rent out for £1,200 um, and it can go up to £1,250 per calendar month. So, not particularly close to the tube, but a nice quiet area and I think potential to add real value to this one. Let's see who agreed when it went under the hammer. Mid-terraced, uh, five-room house, 180 must be worth 180, 180 standing up, 180, 181, 181, 182, 183, 184, 185. Well, not surprisingly, this was a popular lot, and we rejoined the bidding at £200,000. 200, 201, 202, 203, 204, 205. 206, 205 on my left, 206 elsewhere, if not, £205,000, first time, second time, third and last time, if you're done, sold 205 on my left. Hidden from our view, but catching the auctioneer's eye, for that final bit of £205,000 was Raj. We met at the property so she could tell me what she has planned. Raj, great to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> tell me why you wanted to buy the house. I think it's affordable around here and it's good for the rent. So. That's the plan, though, is the rent yep. town. <laughs> what is it about the area that particularly appeals? I've got a few properties around here, so I know the area quite well. Um, Newham Hospital is quite close by, and we go Eastern and University down here, so, yeah. Raj used to be a hospital supervisor, so she knows well the market that could be tapped here. However, property is now where she earns her living. I have a son with special need, and after he born, I couldn't go back to work, and then thinking about his futures adds mine as well, so that's why I start doing my own business. Raj has refurbished properties for resale as well as building a rental portfolio in this area, which has helped her find a more flexible way of life to meet her 14-year-old son Aaron's needs, as well as look after her two daughters, Ria and Hannah. What's the sort of goal? Yeah, as long as my sons can have after us about £5,000 monthly coming in from somewhere, he don't have to rely on somebody, so he's got enough money coming to look after himself. But now I quite enjoy myself as well, um, doing these things. I get relaxed because sometimes you do get stressed thinking about him, but when I come to work, you just, I just get relaxed because I love it. I've never thought of property developing as relaxing. You can sure get passionate about it, excited by it, frustrated by it, but relaxing? Each their own, Raj. I'll assume then she's got a very relaxing project plan for this stress-free property. 
So what are you going to do with it? All the decorations, everything, replastering, rewiring, new kitchen, new bathrooms. And the bathroom keeping it where it is? Temporarily, I think so. I've got a few ideas I need to get around how I can sort of... I like to have a big kitchen because the kitchen is quite small at the moment. Yeah. And I'm not doing any planning permission at the moment. I can't do it, but because I'm renting, I don't want to keep it for eight weeks empty. Okay. Yeah, so maybe for the future, I'll move the bathroom upstairs. Um, what about upstairs? Uh, obviously, three bedrooms, but but one that's very small. It's originally two bedroom house. I know that because uh, most of all houses on the road is two bedrooms. So we are turning back to two bedrooms. You are okay. Yeah. What difference does that make in terms of the rent? Uh, it's no big difference. If it's two bedroom, nice, good size room, people love to have that more than having small three bed. Yeah. So what budget have you got for this place? Around £18,000. £18,000 is a pretty healthy budget and should mean even if the kitchen and bathroom remain in the same place, they will be of much improved quality. Her husband, Jagdesh, and daughter, Ria, have come to look around Raj's new project. But she'll also be getting plenty of help from her other daughter, Hannah. Girls normally start doing the painting oh. and stuff like that. How so old are they? they? Work, um, one is ten, one is seven. Oh, great. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they get a lot involved. They want to know what colour I'm doing, what's happening. So, yeah. Listen, congratulations. Thank you. Good luck with it. Thank you very Look much. We'll see Thanks how you get on. Bye. <laughs> Well, people get involved in property developing and investing for all sorts of reasons. In this case, Raj using it to secure the financial future for her family. Good stuff. In terms of not building an extension above the existing one straight away, is that the right decision? And how about that tight time scale? Will she get it done in time? You can find out later in the show. Now... Do you fancy leaving London behind for a trip to the seaside? Well, traditionally, when Londoners wanted to do just that, they made the short trip here to Margate. I've visited it a lot over the years, and I've watched it transform in front of my eyes. With the help of various regeneration schemes, it's now a smart seaside town with blue flag beaches. With all regeneration, the hope is the benefits will spread to surrounding areas. About a mile and a half from the centre of Margate is Cliftonville, which has seen some hard times. It's a place with some gorgeous buildings, so my hope is that we'll see this area get a new lease of life too. Oh, how I do like to be beside the seaside. No, I know you might not be able to see it on a foggy day like today, but it is actually just at the end of the road. Now, the property I'm here to see is this. It looks a little shabby from the outside, but it's already been converted into five dwellings, all for a guide price of 115 to 120,000. I'm going to head inside and take a look around. Well, this is actually a fairly pleasant hallway. It is a bit dated with the old wood chip, but it's a good size and there's still a little bit of character left here. Now, I know that flat number one at the back here is already tenanted, so I'm going to pop into flat number three and have a look around. This lot also comes with the freehold of the whole building. So if you want to alter it or clean up that shabby exterior or those communal areas, any planning issues aside, you have a lot of freedom. I'm free to do what I want any old time. So into flat number three. And uh, this is it. It is just one room. So what have we got in here? Nice high ceilings, beautiful cornicing, nice fireplace, fabulous bay window, a very small kitchenette, a couple of cupboards and a sink, and a bit of a gag here. Sofa bed, haha, do you like that? <laughs> I know the washing facilities are upstairs on the first floor. This really is it. I'm going to check out flat number two now. So, like next door, it's just one room, not that much space. Another sofa bed. <laughs> You've got a nice fireplace here. But I'm just thinking it might be worth knocking these two little studios into a one-bedroom flat. 
you might not get as much rent, but I think you'd get a longer term tenant and it would just be a much nicer property to live in. At the moment, they're only divided by partitioned walls, so it would be easy to take these down and then rearrange the space. As you know, I would always recommend having a chat with your local planning authority to get their guidance in case you come a cropper. Now, I already mentioned the one-bedroom tenanted flat on the ground floor. Moving up onto the first floor, you have the communal facilities for the two bed sits I've just looked at, including shower, toilet and washing machine. There's another one-bed flat on this floor, and then you head up to the top floor and a fifth one-bed flat. Replacing the dated carpets and giving the walls a lick of paint would really brighten up these communal areas. However, even as they stand, the three currently occupied one-bed flats bring in an impressive income of £13,780 per annum. It's not that often that I visit tenanted properties on this show, but they do come up at auction. On the plus side, this means you already have a regular income from the rent that's being paid, and you're not left with an empty property just sitting there. But there are also some negatives to consider. For starters, you could inherit problematic tenants that are behind in their rent. You may have to honour long-term agreements halting any refurbishment plans that you may have. So there's lots to consider. Just make sure you do your homework, read the legal pack, because it's not always as straightforward as it may seem. This property has a licence from the local authorities to be a house of multiple occupancy, or HMO. Now, the licence is awarded only once all building regs, communal facilities and safety precautions meet the required standards. There's a push in this area for more family dwellings, so HMO licences are difficult to come by, so already having one is a bonus. At a guide price of just 115 to 120,000, we could be looking at a little money spinner, so we asked a local property expert for his opinion. From what I've seen, having looked around the property, it's reasonably clean and tidy, uh, but it is quite dated. I consider the two uh, bed sits quite small, so uh, I would suggest that l you look at putting that into one apartment, but that depends on uh, local planning regulations, of course. Assuming you left them as bed sits, how much rental could you make? Once renovated, I would suggest that this would probably not let for any more than £200 per calendar month. If these two were put into one one-bedroom flat, uh, I would imagine it would let for somewhere around £400 per calendar month. Those figures confirm what I said earlier. Having it as a one-bed flat wouldn't make you any more money. In fact, it would cost you to do the conversion back to a one-bed. But I reckon it would be more likely to rent and be a much nicer place to live. And a happy tenant means a happy landlord in my book. Let's work on the basis that we turned the two studios into a one-bed flat. What could it sell for? A one-bedroom flat here could resell for approximately £65,000. Add that to the three other one-bed flats and four times £65,000 equates to £260,000. Much more profitable than the £175,000 to £180,000 that our agent estimated the property would be worth if you were to sell it as one after basic renovations. If you buy this property for the top end of the guide price, you still get a rental yield of 11% without even lifting a finger to do any work. This sounds like it could be a great investment for someone. Let's see who that was when we went to the auction. Good looking property there, They're guided at 115 to 120. So you're going to come in at 115,000 or make me work. 115, I would have thought it was worth every penny of that. Give me 110 then, send me on the way, 110, I'm obliged. At 115, sitting down, 120, it's against you. 120 if you like, 120 do I see. Take 118 if you like. If not, 118, second row back. 120, sir. 120, can I say? 120 and two, 122 and four. 124, it's against you, 124. At 122,000 pounds I have for the first time, second row back. I'm looking for 124, it will be sold for the second time at 122,000 pounds. 124 I've got, 126, you were pretty close to it. Go for another one, 126, 128, 128 if you like. 
If not at £126,000 again for the first time, £126,000 for the second time, third and final time, second row back, £126,000 all done. You bought it to £126,000. The successful bidders were husband and wife team Steve and Louise, with a bid of 126000 From nearby Sittingbourne, Steve, who runs a shop fitting company, and his florist wife Louise, started up a small property company around 10 years ago, and have been gradually adding to their portfolio once or twice a year. I met the pair of them back at their latest acquisition to find out their plans. Stephen Louise, congratulations. Thank you. How did you find this property? Uh, we, we looked through the local auctions, see what's coming up, and we identified five properties in the area on that particular auction. Uh, came down and uh, this was our preferred choice, so we were delighted to, to be successful. So what was it that appealed to you so Mainly much? Mainly the did? yield. Uh, the yield was quite uh, interesting, even with this empty property. Uh, we're still managing 11% potentially, uh, subject to obviously what we finally paid at the auction. And what do you like about Margate? It's just we've just seen how up and coming it is and watch your programme quite a lot. And, Good. Uh, yes, and down on the seafront, it's really the, all the little sh shops and boutiques, really quite pretty. Yeah, it really has yeah, changed. Yeah, it really has. Awesome. Do you feel this is a great place for you guys to invest at the moment? We're certainly interested. Uh, our main property portfolio is in the Medway Towns, uh, but we have seen that uh, we're, we're achieving better results in, uh, in this part of the world, so it's certainly where we're focusing our attention going forward. So what can you tell me about the tenants and the tenancy agreements of the people that were already here? Because I know a lot of people might have been put off by the fact that people already live in this building. It was a concern. Uh, we don't know too much about how long they've been here. So th that was a risk that we factored into, into the deal, but we, we consider it a risk worth taking. So now you've bought the property at auction, do you think that's going to pose any problems, the fact that people already live here? Uh, so far, since we, we took the property on Monday, uh, two of the tenants have uh, been and introduced themselves, so at the moment we're only uh, waiting for one other tenant to go into the, to, the, uh, to our agent and uh, to liaise with them. Stephen Louise still has some things to go over, as although they've read the legal pack, some details were marked out for data protection purposes. So that will need checking through. But the couple employ a local agent to look after their properties, who they think can organise things quickly. Do you have any plans on moving the tenants on or are they free to stay if they want to and are uh, you going to be upgrading all their properties? Well, we would like them to stay, most definitely. If, you know, if it's their home, we'll upgrade it for them and make it a nice environment for them, but we certainly would welcome them staying. So that really is a win-win situation all round, which is really good news to hear. Yes, I hope so. Yay, smiles all round then, especially for the existing tenants. Baby, something to me. I'm on a win -win. So what are the couple's plans for the property? This, this is sit currently situated as two bed sits, um, which potentially the yield would be better with them as bed sits, but it's not really for us. So Louise and I, we've discussed it, and we're actually going to turn this into a, another one-bedroom flat, um, which we, we aim to do over the next sort of six to eight weeks. We're going to look at all the common areas and bring them up to something a little nicer, uh, give the outside facade a, a facelift as well. Steve and Louise have a budget of 15 to 20,000 and plan to use contractors to do the work. But it will still be a team effort. So who's going to play what role here? Well, I'll be coming down to see, overseeing what the builders are doing and how they're getting on and um, Steve will basically be doing the rest. As I'm down here today, I'm going to be doing the designs, taking all the measurements so we can order all the materials and get everything ready for the, uh, for the guys, and so there's no delays on that part. Guys, I'm really excited for you. Congratulations. Thank this you. has been a good purchase. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Steve and Louise might have done this before, but it's certainly still not without its risks. Let's hope there aren't any complications along the way. You can see how the couple get on later on in the programme. Still to come in Corby, Northamptonshire, an old favourite of mine turns up. Polystyrene tiles, don't you love them? Whilst beside the seaside in Margate, will the sun be shining down on Steve and Louise's project? But first, it was in the London borough of Newham where I came across a mid-terrace, three-bedroomed house. 
well, I say three bedroom, but this was originally a two bed house that had been divided up to create an extra bedroom. Now, you may get a bit more rent for the property, three bedrooms, but really, it doesn't work, does it? Yes, that dividing wall needed to go, and the downstairs layout wasn't too clever either. With the bathroom only accessible by passing through the kitchen, so it was a house with issues. But for property developer Raj, this was nothing she hadn't tackled before. Indeed, she owned similar types of houses in the area. She snapped this one up for 205000 to add to her burgeoning property portfolio. And tell me how you got into it. Um, I got son with special need, and after he born, I couldn't go back to work. And then thinking about his futures, at mine as well, so that's why start doing my own business. And the aim was that her rental portfolio would generate enough income to look after her son. This was also to be a family affair, with her husband, brother and two daughters all lined up to help, alongside her regular team of professional tradesmen. And with a comprehensive renovation and layout change plan, it was going to be all hands to the pump, with a budget of £18,000 and a timescale of just four weeks. And now we're back with Raj to check on progress. Oh my goodness, what an unbelievable transformation. The lounge has been knocked through to take some space off the rear reception room. And remember that sorry kitchen extension with that shower room at the end of it? Oh, well, it's not so sorry now. The kitchen now occupies all of the rear extension and has doors leading out to the garden. And the bathroom, where's that? Well, that now has its own access in what was the rear reception room. What a clever layout change. And upstairs, remember that back bedroom that had been divided in two? Well, it isn't anymore. bedroom finished with similar finesse, upstairs is oh so much better. And if the house itself wasn't amazing enough, look at the garden. Truly stunning. And get this, all these changes were done in just three and a half weeks. Whoa. So is Raj pleased with the outcome? I think it's turned out quite good. I, I like to have a more bigger lounge, but it's, it was not any other way we could do it. Bigger kitchens and nice bathroom as well. But if it's a nice kitchen, nice bathroom, you get a lot more money as well. Yes, definitely kitchens and bathrooms sell properties and make it easier to get good tenants. But usually more bedrooms add value too. So is she worried about losing that extra bedroom? At the moment, because we're keeping the property, so it's not big to rent a different between two and three bedrooms. So we rent it like that, but in the future, if you want to sell it, then we will extend it and then sell it. Raj employed a team of builders she has used on other projects to do the bulk of the work, but her family also helped, particularly with the decoration and the dressing of the house. And not only did she complete the work under her four-week timescale, she also did it under budget, spending just £17,000, which on top of her £205,000 purchase price takes Raj's total cost to £222,000. I think it's all incredible. But what did two local estate agents think? starting with the agent who saw it in its previous shape. I do like the layout of the property. 
Um, I like the kitchen because it's modern, it's new. Um, I like the bathroom as well. They put a bit of a style. And um, living room, as you go in, uh, looks very nice. Obviously, where they've manoeuvred things around, the bathroom is now in a much better position. Um, the finish is exceptionally good as well. I like the contrasting colours that they've used as well, and I think it will appeal to most people in this marketplace at the moment. Raj wants to hang on to the house, adding it to her rental portfolio. But how would a property she's invested £222,000 on so far fare on the current resale market? This property could resale um, at the current market conditions in between £270,000 and £280,000. For resale value uh, on the property, I think with how the work's been carried out, you're looking somewhere in the region of about two hundred and seventy to two hundred and eighty thousand pounds. Well, see, I was thinking it might be two fifty, but uh, yeah, no, I'm really happy with that. So, a potential pre-tax profit of between forty-eight and fifty-eight thousand pounds. But what about those all-important rental values? Property could be rented at the price range in between £1,100 per calendar month and £1,200 per calendar month. You're going to be looking around about £1,100 to £1,200 per calendar month. So what does Raj make of those rental valuations? I'm confident end of the week you'd be rented by £1,250. If she manages to get £1,250 per calendar month, that would mean a yield of nearly 7%. Bad for a four-week project. I can't get over how much she's managed to achieve in such a small time. So what is Raj's secret apart from a team of very reliable builders? My advice to you, if you want to do something, you can do it. So if you go 100% your heart and brain into it, you can do anything. And Raj's philosophy has won through. As we've just heard, she's let the house as predicted for £1,250 per calendar month. Meet the Steel Man, a monument to the industrial past of Corby in Northamptonshire. Corby grew from a village in the 1930s when a new steelworks drew people from all across the country, especially the west coast of Scotland. The Scottish community thrived here and in the 1950s expansion of the town led to a further influx of Scots from across the border, earning the town the nickname Little Scotland. Today the steelworks have long gone but the town is still thriving and in 2010 was said to be the fastest growing town in England. That sounds like a good place to invest in property. So what property made it into the auction catalogue and onwards to a happy buyer? Well it's this neat 60s mid terrace and already I'm thinking I like that tiled frontage. Guide price was £65,000 plus in we jolly well potter. Got a nice little entrance area here and through that way to the kitchen area and this way through into the lounge. I do like that little front bit actually. It's somewhere to sort of put your stuff when you when you come in, your hats and coats, your bags and stuff. Lounge, not a bad size, gas fire, loads of light pouring in, which is good to see. Through to the back. Little dining area over that way uh, with some nice patio doors out into the garden. Uh, you immediately sort of start thinking when you see things like this, I wonder if there's some walls that could come out to make it a bit more open plan. Um, especially in here, this is the kitchen. As you can see, it needs a bit of work, but it's a nice size space. This wall, though, would be number one candidate to go because you've got this strange little utility area there. Open that up to give a much nicer space. But before you start knocking any walls out, there's one feature of the property that does need to be addressed. Ah, polystyrene tiles, don't you love them? This house is actually a bit of a, almost a museum to them. Different polystyrene tiles on the ceilings in most of the rooms. And you may well be staring at these in your property, in which case they need to come off. They are a massive fire risk. If you do have a fire in your house, what happens is they basically just melt, dripping plastic or foamy, whatever it is, onto whoever's in the house. They, they are a disaster. 
seriously, if you're just living in a house, please think about getting rid of them. And if you're a landlord, there are guidelines to follow, which will be checked if your property requires a fire certificate. They are only permitted if they meet relevant fire resistance standards. If they aren't on escape route or stairs, if the tiled area doesn't exceed more than half of the floor area, and if it isn't more than 20 metres squared. Too many ifs already. In my opinion, they're not worth the bother. Moving on, upstairs there's a small landing that leads off to four bedrooms, two slightly larger rooms and two smaller. But all good usable spaces. The bathroom is, again, functional. Not much space to manoeuvre, but you can fit in all the basics, sink, toilet and bath, which can't be said for all the properties I see. All in all, it's a good standard property. It has everything you could need, including this rather colourful downstairs toilet. A bit more space would always be nice, and maybe knocking down walls could open things up a bit. But that means additional costs, and this property does function quite well. So with a guide price of 65000 what did a local property expert think of it? I think with the layout of the home, it, it's already got a very good flow. Certainly upstairs, uh, the bedroom accommodation, the landing space works extremely well. Ground floor wise, you could open up you know, between the dining room and the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen breakfast room is already a good size. Having a separate utility area, you could incorporate either one of those two areas into it, giving it an open plan living kitchen family room, which is very popular at the moment. And what other work does he think needs doing to the property? To start with would be the central heating system. There doesn't appear to be any form of heating in the home. Uh, the polystyrene ceiling tiles are, are an issue. They would need to be removed and ceilings re-skimmed. And in terms of the wiring system in the home as well, it seems to be dated wiring, so the new consumer unit and a rewiring in the property would be required. So what can all this work convert into in terms of profit? In the current marketplace, I believe this property having been refurbished to a good standard as described, it would fetch something in the region of £120,000 to £125,000. Wow, that's nearly twice the guide price. Can you get such a good return on the rental as well? For the rental market, I believe this property would achieve something in the region of £650 to £675 per calendar month. That's all sounding quite healthy. So get rid of the ceiling tiles, open up the kitchen, and you could have a nice little bundle of profit on your hands. Let's see who got this possible gift of a property when it went under the hammer. A three-bedroomed townhouse. Who's got 64 to start me? 64, thank you, 64,000 pounds. 65, thank you, 65. 65, seated at 66. 66, 67. 67, 68, sir. 68 is bid, at 68, 500, 68, 5, 69, 500, 70,000, it's not a dear property, 500, 71, 71, 71, 5, 71, 5, 72, 72 is bid, it's going to go, at 72, it's worth one more, at 72,000 pounds, 500 somewhere else, at 72,000 once, Twice, third time, sold at 72,000, thank you. The hammer fell at 72,000 pounds. Buyer John came to Corby when he was 18 months old and like many before him, worked in the steel industry. Now he runs a taxi business. I met him back at the property to tell me more. John, great to meet you. Thank you, Martin. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Tell me why you wanted to buy this place. Just an investment, really. It was um, something I've been looking at for a little while now, and uh, I've been buying my housing market starting to pick up a bit, and I mm -hmm. thought it was a good good time to invest. So, of all the ones you could have picked, why this one? I looked at it three or four days before the auction, and um, I was quite impressed with it. I, I thought it was needing a bit of work done, but you know, I think there's there's room for an investment there and to make a profit. Tell me what you're going to do to the house to sort it out. Well, downstairs, I mean, we're we're looking at maybe knocking the dining room wall out and making it a kitchen diner. Mm -hmm. um, there's a room adjacent to the kitchen, I mean, we'll probably keep that as a utility room, I think. Um, living room will, everything, basically everything needs, you know, cosmetically tidied up, really. And electrics, probably, I think, judging by the... Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, the electrics is definitely, that's, that's going to be a first. Um, I've got my cousin coming in tomorrow, he's an electrician, so um, he's going to start working that because, obviously, it's needing rewired, so... Now, obviously, pesky polystyrene tiles everywhere. Mm. I presume they're coming off. 
you know, blast from the past, haven't they? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to come off. A, I don't know what state the ceilings would be like under it, but they'll probably need skimmed, I would imagine, anyway. But, um, yeah, the whole lot will be coming down. What's the budget? We're looking between sort of fifteen and seventeen thousand pound, I think, to do it on that. That should make it nice and respectable, I think. You know, and prospective rental. You know, yeah, so. yeah. The rewiring. I'm hoping for May's race from my cousin. So well, <laughs> you I know. hope so. It's <laughs> May's. He's a yeah. family. Yeah. Up for the first barbecue, wasn't he? So. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking that way. That's uh, if we can get round about that, I'll be quite happy. And are you going to get your hands dirty? Do a lot of the work. I'd like to say it was, yeah, but unfortunately I'm not very handy. I think the only thing handy about me, I live around the corner, you know what I mean? <laughs> I live far from here, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not... Um, no trade or nothing like that, so I mean, I'll be getting... calling friends in and uh, local tradesmen mm -hmm. do most of the work in here, so... Mm -hmm. I'll probably help ripping the garden up and sort of now, but no. A project manager, I think, is the best, best way to describe well, it. Sometimes it's best to leave it to the professionals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always handy if you are handy. But it's always good to know your limits. You might begrudge getting the professionals in, but you've got to weigh up how long it will take you and how good a finish you would do. A bad finish can cost you money, and time is money in property. John has a timescale of four to five months, and I think he's making a wise choice. And then once it's done, on the rental market, and then you back in the auction? Possibly. I mean, I've got the bug now. I found it really interesting. It was, a, it was the first time I'd ever been. And um, I really found it interesting. And I was there with my brother-in-law, and we were joking about being on the show, actually. And, were you? And, and, <laughs> so I was quite shocked when I was approached. Were you happy with what you paid for this? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I went there with the thought, I mean, if, if it's 65, I think the guy price was 65, um, and I would have kicked myself if I hadn't gone. Yeah, luckily enough, I came through. So. Good. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Good luck with it. Thanks very much, man. Thank Hopefully you. See how you get on. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think John's got a good house for his first investment property. How's he going to get on sorting it out? A reasonable budget, reasonable time scale. It should all go to plan. But you never know. You can find out later in the show. Well, it's been several months now since we last saw those properties. Has any work been done? Do they look exactly the same? Let's go back and find out. Back now to a spot I used to holiday at as a little girl, Sunny Margate. It was here that I met Stephen Louise, who had bought this property for 126000 consisting of three one-bed flats and two bedsits. It already had tenants in the three flats, so we were only able to see the two bedsits. But what I did see showed real potential, and experienced renovator Stephen Louise agreed. What are you going to do to change this? This, this, this is currently situated as two bed sits, um, which potentially the yield would be better with them as bed sits, but it's not really for us. So Louise and I, we've discussed it, and we're actually going to turn this into a, another one-bedroom flat, um, which we, we aim to do over the next sort of six to eight weeks. We're going to look at all the common areas and bring them up to something a little nicer, uh, give the outside facade a, a facelift as well. Having existing tenants could be problematic, but Steve and Louise were relaxed about it. Plus, they owned the freehold to the building, which was a big bonus. We've returned two months later to see how the couple have progressed. Bedsits have been turned into a desirable one-bed flat, as Louise explains. So originally this would have been the entrance uh, hall to bedsit two and three. So the doors were here, this was flat uh, bedsit two, bedsit three, partition wall here and here which we've taken down. We've put the beautiful kitchen in and the new ensuite. So we've made it a beautiful one-bedroom flat. Along with the new kitchen and ensuite, they've also created a nice outdoor decked area that leads off the bedroom, which is a lovely bonus. True to their word, Steve and Louise have also repainted the corridor and communal stairway, 
as well as re-carpeting throughout, therefore improving it for the existing tenants. The communal area, which once housed the toilet and shower for the bedsits, has now been turned into a kitchen, thanks to a discovery that Steve wasn't expecting. We're in the communal area, and our plan's slightly changed here because previously there was a WC and toilet in this room, which we realised behind that wall is actually a complete bathroom, so actually that's not, no longer required, so we've had that all removed. Turns out one of the locked doors we couldn't get access to on the first floor housed a shower room used by Flat 5, so that has changed the way they are now looking at this space. If they carry out a plan to put a shower room in that flat, then they can turn the current utility area, newly discovered shower room, toilet and hall into a small separate fifth unit, meaning five units rather than four, potentially improving any possible rental yield for Stephen Louise. As with our first visit, flats one, four and five are occupied. Although flat four did have a change of tenant, which gave Louise and her sister the opportunity to nip in and give it a quick lick of paint. The whole building now is looking brighter, fresher and more desirable. Perfect for the rental market that the couple want to attract. Now come and meet me on the sunny road. I'm most pleased with the property. I couldn't really visualise um, how it was going to look and when we came down and the wall had been knocked down and do you know the guys have worked so hard and we just walked in and it's just just so pleased with all of it it looks absolutely fantastic uh, I took the uh, role originally I did the drawings of the the kitchen the bathroom and the layout and then I very cleverly passed it all on to Louise who's been down here keeping an eye running around the materials and making sure it all happens done a fantastic job thank you <laughs> Yeah, quite right too. Louise and the team of contractors have done a great job. But how is their original timescale looking? Our initial thoughts were that it would take about six to eight weeks to do the property. Um, we started a little bit behind because of having to renovate flat four. And then my main business, we've been really busy, and I actually used the contractors that we employed here to, to work on my main business. So in fact, we, we did start late, and, but the whole, this whole property was done in just under two weeks. Uh, when we initially purchased the property, we, had a, we set ourselves a target of between 15 to 20,000 as a budget without really having a good look at the property. Uh, we've incurred a little bit of extra expense because we have now done flat four, which we weren't expecting to at that point. But at the moment, we're thinking we're coming in around about the 13,500 mark, but we have still got some bills to come in, and also we've still got some more works that we intend to do to further improve the property. So as it stands, Louise and Steve have invested a total of £139,500 and their plans to rent the properties out are going really well, with all the flats being tenanted, including the newly renovated one bed, which has a tenant moving in shortly. So with these seaside properties bobbing along nicely, it will be interesting to see what the two local property experts think of the renovation based on the bits they have access to, of course. It's my second time to the property. Uh, the changes they've made have been very good. They're quite basic, but they've improved the property immensely. So the agent who first saw it thinks the property has improved. But improved enough? What about values? Uh, if the whole property were to be sold with the four dwellings, uh, I would expect it to achieve probably no more than about 200 to 210,000 pounds. If the owners were considering selling this property as a whole, then I would consider a marketing value of £270,000. We had an initial offer just after completion of 250, so I think uh, somewhere between 250 and 270 now we've done the work, considering the yield would be a reasonable figure. I think mm -hmm. 210 may be a little on the low side. <laughs> So if we take that offer of 250,000, that would mean a potential pre-tax profit of a huge 110,500 pounds, minus taxes and expenses. But even in the face of that stunning profit, the pair still only have eyes for rental. In terms of this particular flat for a rental, I would expect it to achieve uh, approximately 400 to 450 pounds per calendar month. For rental income per month, it would be £400 per calendar month. 
So, that would boost the already impressive yield of 11% for the other flats in the property to a whopping 13%, making this project a huge success and Louise a very proud lady. I've really enjoyed it, actually. It's um, Steve's done a lot of them in the past, and this has been... I'll add more of a rain on this one, so it's been my little project, really, so it's been uh, really good. Really enjoyed it. Great result in Margate there. So, will it be the same story here in Corby, where earlier I met John, who was also hoping that the rental market would provide healthy returns for him when he bought this four-bed mid-terraced house. My housing market's starting to pick up a bit, and I thought it was a good, good time to invest. So, of all the ones you could have picked, why this one? Well, it's the price, really. I mean, I, I looked at it three or four days before the auction and um, I was quite impressed with it. I, I thought it was needing a bit of work done, but, you know, I think there's, there's room for an investment then to make a profit. Five months later, we've returned to find out how it all went. I'm glad to see that John took my advice and got rid of that wall between the kitchen and the dining room. No expense has been spared. The finish is lovely high-quality fixtures and fittings. And it's great to see that those polystyrene ceiling tiles are no more. There's a necessity to get rid of them anyway because there's a fire hazard when renting a property out. So we had no choice in other than get rid of them. It's been a lot of hard work, you know, and I've had some good help from friends and family and, uh, and a lot of professional builders have been in, you know, they're, they're friends of mine, and they've done a great job, a fantastic job. And it's been great to watch it, you know, being a bit tired looking and, you know, to, to but it's turned out to be, so I'm really pleased with it. But it hasn't all been plain sailing. The biggest challenge has got to be the garden. I mean, it, it took us five or six skips to empty the place. Um, we've had roots to dig out, three trees to bring down, bushes. And of course, when we brought the bushes down, we had the high winds in January. That took all the fencing out, so added a bit more of the budget, you know, having replaced the fences. And, uh, but I'm pleased with the result. I'm really pleased with the way it's finished. John is right to be pleased. It's a cracking job. So I'm wondering if he turned out to lack handiness, as he claimed. I've done a wee bit. I'd, um, I was out in the garden, helped out in the garden a couple of times, and knocking the walls down and, you know, just generally tidying up, really. But I've enjoyed it. I really have enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's the first time I've ever done anything like this, and whether I've got the bug, I don't know. I think I might have. I really enjoyed doing it. <laughs> yes, he's got the bug all right. John intended this house as a rental, so is that still the plan? We've got somebody moving in next week, so we've got a tenant ready to move in, which is pleasing. Um, and we're probably going to look at the next ten years, I would imagine, renting it out if we can, and then possibly selling from there and, did I say, semi-retirement? I don't know. But we'll see. <laughs> I like John's thinking. Now, he'd given himself a budget of between 15 and 17,000 pounds. How did he get on with that? Well, on the budget side of it, um, I went over. But we had the you know, hidden extras to pay for the windows. Some of the windows need to be replaced. The doors need to be replaced, exterior doors. Um, the fencing after the wind had blown it down in January. And uh, it took me up to the 20,000 pound mark, so. Oops, these things quickly add up. But at least he stuck to his five month time scale, just. You know, it took us a full five months. In fact, we only finished it about 10 hours ago. Um, touching up with paintwork and things like that, and uh, tidy, a general tidy up, really, because a lot of dust with the plastering being done and everything. But, um, yeah, about 10 hours ago we finished, so we couldn't be much nearer. So, yeah, happy. So that £72,000 sale price, added to £20,000 renovations costs, comes to £92,000. Did two local property experts think all that hard work was worth it? The fittings are immaculate throughout, the flooring, the kitchen, the bathroom, um, all the fittings are second to none. The finish is very, very high uh, in effect. I would say he's gone a little bit over the top for, for the area that the property was within, but the finish is outstanding, high class, and he will get the money that he deserves for the home. Um, I think that the kitchen and diner um, is far better this way than it would have originally been with a separate dining room. So we're all in agreement then. John has spent a total of £92,000 on this property and he does intend to rent, but we have to ask what it could sell for. I mean, it'd be rude not to. I would 
would place this property for sale onto the market at £130,000 to achieve a figure very close to that. If I was to market this property, I'd place it onto the market for £130,000 with the view of achieving anywhere between £125,000 and £130,000. Yeah, pleased with that. That's a good profit. You know, I, mean, I mean, the amount of work we've put into it, you know, I think it's a realistic price. And yeah, that's round about what we thought anyway. Even that lowest estimate would give John a potential profit of £33,000 minus all the usual taxes and expenses. But as he already has a tenant lined up, what do our experts think he could achieve on the rental market? For rental, I would place this property onto the market at between a figure of £625 per Canada month and £675 per Canada month. I think the landlord could achieve on the rental market anywhere between 625 and 675 pounds per calendar month. At the lowest figure, that would give John a healthy yield of 8%. Yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, I've got a tenant moving in very shortly and they've offered more money than that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the sort of figures. We've got a bit more and uh, I think the house proves it's worth a little bit more. Anyway, so. Yes, that high-end finish has obviously paid its way by helping John to get the best possible rental income. He's done well with his first foray into the property market. I'm very pleased with it. I mean, a lot of people, I say a lot of friends and family, put a lot of hard work in it. And um, you know, it's, it's a lot of efforts have come to show you know, we've got a nice big property here, and I'm very, very pleased. Very pleased. That's great to hear. Will he be going back to the auction then? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think I've got the bug now, and I'm, I'm, I've really enjoyed doing this. And I think, you know, I'm looking at a couple of houses now um, in the three-bedroom, two-bedroom range, and they're at auction as well. So you never know. You never know. I think, I think I've got the bug. So join us next time for more auction ups and downs. Yes, from bungalows to basements to building sites. It's all here on Homes Under the Hammer. <laughs> See you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.